In this video, we're going to talk about how I flew 2,500 miles all the way to Silicon Valley just to fail all my technical interviews and three lessons that I learned from this experience. To do this, I first have to take you back to 2019. In 2019, I felt pretty stuck in my job working as a software engineer at a small startup in New York City. I loved the people I was working with, but I didn't really feel passionate about the product we were building or the technology that we were using day to day. And at this point, I had been with the company for a little bit over a year, so I was kind of getting the itch to try something a little bit different. So much so that I actually went ahead and started interviewing at other companies. While I had tons of interviews that summer, the two companies I cared most about were located all the way in California, and after passing both of their phone screens, I was invited out to the Bay Area to do a final round of on-site interviews. The two companies that I was interviewing at were Amazon and Quora, both of which checked the two most important boxes I was prioritizing during my job search, working at a larger company, and working with more senior tenured engineers. I was an avid user of both the company's products, and I was really excited to try and capitalize on the opportunity in front of me. The possibility of working at Amazon or Quora really excited me, and I put a lot of pressure on myself to perform to the best of my abilities during my interviews. And even though I was on vacation in Europe the week before the on-sites, I made sure to spend the last few hours of each day studying potential coding questions and system design problems that I might see during the interviews. I actually even recorded a lot of the footage of me actually going to the on-sites in California and coming back, thinking that'd make for a really cool video about how I got into one of these companies, but obviously that didn't really pan out the way I was hoping it would. And for anyone who's never done an on-site interview, at one of these large tech companies, it's a pretty wild experience. You fly to wherever the company is located one day, and then you have about five hours of interviews the next. The company you're interviewing at puts you up in a hotel the night before the interviews, and then you typically fly home either the day of the interview after you finished, or the day after. And in some ways, it's kind of like a really expensive first date. Neither party knows what's going to happen, but you're both really hoping for the best. Once I made it to California, I checked into my hotel and relaxed. I don't really believe in prepping the day before the interview. At that point, I kind of think that the result's already baked in, and it's really best to just get a good night's sleep and try and calm your mind. The next morning, I woke up and I headed to Quora's HQ in Mountain View. And to me, Quora was an awesome company. It was also run by a previous CTO of Facebook, which made me think that their tech and development processes would be top notch. Once I arrived at their office, I was greeted by my recruiter and shortly after, I began my long day of interviews. After my first three interviews, I grabbed lunch at their cafe and then finished my day with my last two interviews. I'm always amazed about two things during on-site interviews. How fast the five hours go by and how tiring these interviews actually are. That day is largely a blur to me since it's now about four years ago, but there is one thing about that interview process that really stood out to me. And that's that at Quora, one of their interviews is actually a pair programming interview where I was expected to build out a small part of a new feature and write tests for it in about 45 minutes. And to be totally honest, it's safe to say that I failed that interview spectacularly. <laughs> I didn't know my way around the IDE I was using. I really struggled to find the source files that I was supposed to change to actually implement the new part of the new feature. And the number of tests that I'd written at this point in my career, I literally could have counted on my two hands. Regardless, I felt pretty good about the other four interviews I had, and at this point, I was just happy to be done with my long interview process. I headed back to my hotel and got a good night's sleep before my next full day of interviews with Amazon. The next day, I woke up, grabbed breakfast, and headed over to one of Amazon's AWS buildings to get my on-site interviews started. The idea of working at Amazon was also super exciting to me. I use their products all the time, and their name screamed Big Tech, which had always been a goal of mine coming out of college. Once I arrived, I specifically remember how big the building felt, especially the AWS that was plastered on the side of it, and just how many people were flooding into the building after all getting out of ride sharing cars. This was my first experience in the Bay Area, and this could not have felt more different than how I was used to working in New York City. If you've ever seen the show Silicon Valley, it really made me think of that. Once inside, my day looked very similar to my interviews at Quora. I had five interviews that day with a lunch in the middle, and by the end of it, I was so tired I could barely remember my name. Oh, my life! Much like the Quora interviews, a few things stood out in my head about the Amazon experience. Most notably how I was so nervous during one of my coding interviews that I actually wrote an if statement checking for a closing quotation mark character. Yeah, it was it was really bad. The other interview that stood out to me weirdly was my behavioral interview, which is hilarious because every behavioral interview in my experience has been extremely easy, but this was not the case with Amazon. You see, Amazon has something called their leadership principles or their LPs, and they really care about them. So much so that they will spend a full 45 Five minute drilling down and asking you questions about how you've exemplified those leadership principles in your past work experiences. It's not uncommon to be asked a single question like, tell me about a time you went above and beyond for a customer, and then receive five plus follow-up questions to that exact experience that you tell them about. And being that this is my first interview with Amazon, I really did not understand just how deep they'll go with the behavioral interview questions. I figured like every other behavioral interview I'd had, they'd just be checking for red flags, but this could not have been further from the truth. So be warned, Amazon really cares 
cares about their behavioral interviews and you should care about theirs too. I finished my interviews with Amazon that day and I was finally free from my two long, grueling days of all day tech interviewing. Now all that was left was my long six hour flight back to New York and the impossible task of waiting about a week to hear whether or not I'd receive offers from either Amazon or Quora. Fast forward about a week and I got reached out to by both of my recruiters and they asked to hop on a quick call. And to no one's surprise, I did not get offers from either of those companies, but it actually ended up teaching me three really important lessons. The first lesson that it taught me is that no 45 minute coding interview can possibly define your worth. Believing it could is like assuming that a stranger could learn everything about you as a person in 45 minutes. And we're much too complicated as humans for that to be true. Instead, what it does do is it gives another engineer some time to make a judgment about how you think, communicate, and ultimately solve problems by translating ideas into code. Because of this, I like to think about hiring decisions as more of confidence scores instead of binary hire and no hire decisions. Personally, I don't believe that companies are ever 100% sure that you're the right person to offer, but instead they feel with X percentage of certainty that the benefits of hiring you outweigh the risk that they're wrong. You can't control how many people the company's hiring, who you're competing against for that specific slot, the questions that you're going to get asked during the interview, and many other factors. All you can do is your best. The next lesson I learned from failing these interviews is that succeeding is actually inevitable as long as you keep trying. And it sounds cheesy, but I really do believe it's true. And I'll give you a couple reasons to exemplify at this point. The first is really simple. Imagine flipping a coin. While you can't guarantee it'll land on heads every time, with interviewing, you just need to land on heads once. And statistically speaking, if you flip the coin enough times, aka interview enough times, you're almost guaranteed to succeed at some point, even if the probability of passing a specific interview is really low. The next reason I believe this is true is because it really, truly has been my experience. About a year after failing this interview, I actually received an offer from Amazon and ended up working there. And I honestly can't tell you how many interviews I've failed in the past because I've seriously lost count. But what I can tell you is that eventually I did start succeeding and landing offers that I only could have dreamed of when I first started my interviewing journey. Finally, thinking short term with regard to interviews is really short sighted. Interviewing is a skill that you're going to need throughout your entire career, so you have plenty of time to get good at it. The last thing that failing these interviews taught me is to not be so attached to very specific results. It's easy in life to put certain people or achievements on pedestals because that's what you're striving for at a specific point in time. And applying to college is a really great example of this. Lots of people probably want to go to Harvard but you don't need to go to Harvard to get a good education. Like colleges, there's tons of different companies to join and grow at as a software engineer. Don't get tunnel vision and think that you have to join a specific one to learn valuable things. In fact, much like college, you get out what you put in. What will matter at the end of the day is what you do on the job and how hard you work at your craft. Not the piece of paper you get for attending classes and paying tuition for four years or the stamp of approval you get for working at a specific company. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, drop the video a like, subscribe to the channel for more, and I'll see you guys next time.